I have a timer here. The rules of quantum mechanics. Your time starts now. We see a lot of advancements in AI and other software developments, but don't you think it's been quite a while since we've been using transistor-based computers? Well, I have a lot of new developments today because there is not one, but two possible computing alternatives that we might end up using in the future. And let me promise one thing straight away. The second alternative will blow your mind. First one is quantum computing. But why do we need them at all in the first place? Because there are exceptionally large classical computers often equipped with thousands of classical CPU and GPU cores capable of handling extensive calculations and advanced artificial intelligence tasks. But even supercomputers rooted in 20th century transistor technology and reliant on binary code face difficulties when tackling specific types of problems. If a supercomputer encounters an obstacle, it's typically because it was tasked with solving a highly intricate problem. Experts classify complex problems as those that are characterized by numerous variables interacting in intricate ways. For instance, modeling the behavior of individual atoms within a molecule is complex due to the myriad interactions among electrons. Detecting subtle patterns of fraud in financial transactions or uncovering new physics within a supercollider are also examples of complex problems. Many of these complex problems remain unsolvable with classical computers, regardless of their scale. And this is where quantum physics come to help. To truly grasp this emerging shift, it's important to jump into the inner workings of these computers and discern what sets them apart from their conventional counterparts. Now, I understand that explanations about this topic can often become quite technical, but I'll do my best to keep things straightforward and understandable. Think of classical computers as skilled acrobats who effortlessly toss ones and zeros into the air, performing intricate calculations with finesse. But the game changes when it comes to quantum computers. Quantum computers introduce a new player into the mix called quantum bits or qubits. Similar to the familiar ones and zeros, qubits also have a role to play and here's where the magic unfolds. Qubits process a unique ability known as superposition. Imagine it as having a third gear in addition to forward and reverse. This enables qubits to exist as both one and zero simultaneously, much like a third coin spinning in midair, showing both heads and tails simultaneously. With superposition at their disposal, two qubits can represent not just two scenarios, but an astonishing four scenarios all at once. It's akin to having four dice rolling and displaying different numbers simultaneously. This turbocharges the entire computing process. While regular computers meticulously analyze ones and zeros step by step, quantum computers in superposition leap through four scenarios in a single bound. You must be thinking that, okay, having superposition is cool, but what could be the real world implication of it? Well, in a real world, our data is expanding at an unprecedented rate, and we're approaching the limits of adding more transistors to a single chip. The immense load of data that we generate is crying out to be deciphered and understood. Even if the transitional computing rigs can handle this task, they are not the most optimized solution. And since optimization is the center point of computing, we require a computing hero with unparalleled power to tackle this data tsunami and unveil its hidden insights. For the past half decade, AI has been the focal point of the tech landscape, and these computers have what it takes to change the game once and for all. For explaining this revolution, I will be talking about a few concepts that you need to understand to better understand things logically. First off, let's talk about quantum entanglement, a concept that's opening up new possibilities for achieving intricate correlations between variables within algorithms. It is a fundamental phenomenon in quantum physics where two or more particles become interconnected in such a way that the state of one particle is dependent on the state of another, even when they are separated by large distances. This means that changes made to one particle will instantaneously affect the other particle regardless of the physical separation between them. Albert Einstein famously referred to this phenomenon as spooky action at a distance. Now this has the potential to completely transform how we manage and analyze data. This ability will enable these computers to tackle complex optimization problems that have long been a challenge for classical computers. It also holds the promise of greatly enhancing the performance of AI algorithms, 
Thanks to this physical phenomenon, the development of AI architectures become more streamlined and expansive. Physical phenomena like these help in extending the power of quantum computers and making calculations that were previously inaccessible with classical computing systems. Take Shor's algorithm, for instance, which has the potential to factor large numbers efficiently. The second, and perhaps the most intriguing physical phenomenon, is quantum annealing, which draws inspiration from the natural process of annealing in metallurgy, where a material is gradually heated and cooled to achieve a desired crystalline structure. In the quantum realm, this concept guides qubits towards finding optimal solutions to complex problems. Optimization problems involve finding the best solution from a set of possible solutions, often with numerous variables and constraints. These problems are prevalent in various fields, including logistics, finance, drug discovery, and machine learning. However, it's not all smooth sailing because there's a new trend emerging, known as save now and decrypt later. What exactly does that mean? Well, companies worldwide are accumulating vast amounts of data with the intention of delaying decryption until quantum-resistant encryption algorithms become available. The idea behind this approach is to keep your secrets safe but not immediately looking at them. Instead, they're saved for later, making them impervious to prying eyes. Even if someone attempts to access them prematurely, all they'll find is an unsolvable puzzle. But as with any good story, there are challenges. The special key used to unlock your secrets must also be safeguarded like having a super secret password that only you know. It's crucial to ensure no one else discovers it. Now you might be wondering what the big deal is if your secrets are secure, and these companies are working to protect them all. Well, alongside these efforts, criminals are also accumulating encrypted data from their targets, envisioning a future where the power of quantum computing becomes potent enough to breach existing cryptographic safeguards. It's as if they're planting encrypted seeds, patiently waiting the day when the digital landscape changes, yielding valuable information. A survey suggests that over 400 professionals from organizations considering the benefits of quantum computing believe their organizations are at risk of save now, decrypt later attacks. To address these concerns, the White House has issued national security memoranda aimed at ensuring that government agencies are well prepared for the looming quantum threat. These memos stress the need for agencies to strategize and, within a decade of the NIST standards publication, transition to algorithms that can withstand the advancements in quantum computing. Before I move to the second approach, let me make one thing clear. It's about us getting to use the quantum computers. Well, these computers are highly problem-specific and cannot be used like general-purpose computers that we use today. MKBHD, along with a fellow YouTuber, visited IBM to see a working quantum computer. And as you can see, the size of these computers is not really pocket or even office friendly. These computers also need to be kept in temperatures close to absolute zero to avoid discoherence. The might of these computers for the foreseeable time can only be used by big companies that require a lot of data processing, not commoners like us. So circling back to the topic I promised to discuss, while quantum computing is relatively well known, there's also a noteworthy focus on developments in the world of analog computing that shouldn't be overlooked. Yes, we might be heading back to our instincts faster than you think. Think of it like watching a graph on a screen. It shows voltage going up and down, much like a bouncing ball on a spring. But it's important to understand that analog computers have their own unique qualities. They're good at specific tasks, just like quantum computers, but sometimes they struggle with being very precise. Analog systems have a bit of randomness, so there can be about a 1% error. The key point here is that analog computers are better than general purpose digital ones for certain jobs. Artificial intelligence, especially neural networks, need to do a lot of big math calculations. Analog computers are great at this because they can do many calculations at the same time. Companies like Mythic AI are looking into using analog chips for these calculations because they can be fast and use less energy. But using analog technology also comes with some challenges, like making sure the answers are accurate by converting them between analog and digital forms. But the benefits cannot be just written off. Mythic's AI analog chip is impressive. It can do 25 trillion math operations every second while using just a little bit of power, like three watts. In comparison, modern digital systems, especially those made for AI with GPUs, can do even more math operations from 25 to 100 trillion per second. 
However, these digital systems are usually bigger and need more power, around 50 to 100 watts. Also, Mythic AI's analog chip costs less than the expensive GPU units that can cost thousands of dollars. In addition to price, the form factor they come in is what we are often quite used to, and they work like our brains with both continuous and discrete signaling, which in my opinion makes them a more suitable alternative for solving complex problems. They also don't require the space and cooling of a quantum computer, and I believe that we might be seeing more of them in the future. Subscribe to AI Symbiosis for more developments from the world of AI. I have made a documentary on the historic background of AI. It's on your screens, so make sure you check it out, and I'll catch you there in a second.